A few weeks back I posted my first update video which was part 11 in a series of videos called How I Made My Electronic Drum Kits. The first 10 videos in this series were made 10 years ago. In part 11 I showed you which changes I made to the hardware of my drum kit. But of course I have updated my drum module as well. In this video I will explain why I bought the Roland TD50X module and I will also explain why I haven't connected the pads that I play Hyatt on to the Hyatt input. And at the end I will make a few suggestions for improvements for the next version of the module. I hope Roland is watching. Some of the info might be interesting to all of you drummers, but some details might only be of interest to electronic drum nerds. So to try and keep all of you on board, I will put the details that might bore the average drummer in a frame with this logo. Nerds can pause the video and read the text, others might want to move on to the next chapter in this video. In the past decades I've always used two or sometimes three different drum modules. In the 90s I combined the LSS D4 and DM5 and later on the D4 and DM Pro. Part 8 of this series you can see an equipment flight case with a Roland TD8 and an LSS D4. From the TD8 I upgraded to a TD20 module and I combined that module with a Roland TM2. Although the TM2 is designed for use with acoustic drums, I used it to add a few more trigger inputs and to play samples, because the TD20 can't do that. So I gradually became a fan of Roland feed drums. Not because of their looks, in fact I prefer pads to look differently than acoustic drums, but I have found the feed drums to have better and faster trigger to sound conversion. Before I dive into the TD50, let me explain why I have been using two modules simultaneously for over two decades. There were two reasons. The first was that I played a big kit and no module had enough trigger inputs for my liking. As you may have seen in other videos, I am not just a drummer. I like to add percussion and samples as well. Since most modules follow the standard layout of an acoustic drum kit, I never had enough inputs. Through the years, my kit was roughly a 20-piece kit, so using two drum modules was a necessity for me because of the amount of pads I use. The second reason for using two drum modules all these years was that since I'm not a standard drummer, no single drum module could fulfill all my wishes. Not even the Roland TD20 and TD30 module, which is almost identical to the TD20. So by combining two modules and connecting them from MIDI, I got quite close to the setup I wanted. These were things I wanted to do, but wasn't able to do with a single module. Closed Hyatt and open Hyatt on a single pad. More control over half open Hyatt sounds. Layer sounds like Hyatt and kick or snare. Play my own samples and loops. Well, a few of these things were possible, at the very least the last one, using the TM2, for example. But I never found one single hardware module that could do all of these things. Using two modules has its advantages and its disadvantages, but I learned to live with the disadvantages. After the disappointment when the TD30 was released, not a big step forward, we had to wait a while for the Roland TD50. It was and still is quite expensive, but for me it is the best hardware drum module available at the moment. With the TD50 module I can pretty much do everything I wanted even before the X update. Let's look at the checklist. If I disconnect head and rim settings for a specific pad, I can assign a closed hi-hat sound to the head of the pad and an open hi-hat sound to the rim. Then I can use the mute group function to have the closed sound mute the open sound. So I go to mute group page and on the mute send row I have set the group number to 1 for the head of the pad. Then on the mute receive row I have set the group number to 1 for the rim of the pad.
You may not see the advantage of playing this way if you play rock music. But if you play electronic music, this means you can use your left foot to play other sounds. Muting is also very useful if you want to have a reverse cymbal sound building up in volume towards the first beat of the next measure. Like this. When playing rock music without a hi-hat pedal, I do not want to be limited to just a few fixed settings. Like on a TD20 where you can select fixed 1 to 4. In the TD50X I can select a hi-hat sound and select the half 2 setting to get a decent half open sound. Then I can shorten it through the advanced page and the pad DK setting, like this. Although critics may say that the result might not exactly sound like a change in height of a half open height, this is good enough for me. The TD50 module has the option Sub Instrument that you could use to layer two sounds. It seems that its primary function is to layer two similar sounds. You could program two different snares to mix a crispy snare and a fat snare, like this. Also, you could use this function to layer two completely different sounds. In this kit, I have three sounds on three toms from right to left, kick, close hi-hat, snare. As you may have heard, the kick and snare have a hi-hat sound as a sub-instrument. On the remaining tom, I have selected an open hi-hat sound that is muted by the other pads. So I can play a drum pattern on these four pads with just one hand. This leaves my other limbs to play other sounds like conga, bass guitar or something else. Well, some drum modules can play samples, but my previous module, the Roland TD20, couldn't do it. Since I bought the TD50X, I have been using samples in several songs. You can save WAV files on an SD card and import the files on the module. Once you have imported the file, you can take the SD card out. The import function copies the samples to memory. So, looking back, it was great to learn that this new flagship module removed all my personal roadblocks. But there was a serious disadvantage for me, if I was to replace my two older modules by this new flagship. I had less trigger inputs available. I had to think about that for a while, which pads to take out and how I would use the remaining pads. I managed to find a layout with 16 pads and symbols, excluding the higher pedal. The TD50 module has only 14 inputs. In a previous video in this series, I already explained how I am able to connect my 16 pads and symbols to the 14 inputs of the TD50X module. I explained that I made two splitter cables that each combine two mono pads into one stereo input. Here is the diagram. Apart from the hi-hat assignment, I think the rest makes sense. As I explained in a previous video in this series, my advice with splitter cables is to only use them with two pads of the same brand and type. So I have chosen to use one splitter cable to connect my two 6-inch rubber pads to the AUX3 input. And a second splitter cable to connect the two trigger pedals in the middle to the AUX4 input.
About 20 seconds ago I showed the current layout and path to input diagram. Let me pull it back up. In this diagram you can see that I've connected the symbol that I usually play as China sound to the Hyatt input of my module. If you have seen other videos of me, you would have seen that I play most of my hi-hat sounds on these two pads. And those two are connected to the AUX1 and AUX2 inputs. I will explain why. The short version, I prefer to play hi-hat sounds on a mesh head pad and if I connect one of these pads to the hi-hat input, I cannot use the rim or edge of the hi-hat at least not in the current version of the TD50X. I can understand that this might sound strange to you, so let me demonstrate this by doing two different tests. For this short demonstration, I have unplugged the black jack cable that runs from my multi-connector into the Hyatt input. I now have this silver cable inserted in the Hyatt input, which is input number 7. I plug the other end of the silver cable into this PD85. So now the PD85 on my left is connected to the Hyatt input and the PD85 on my right is still connected to the AUX1 input. I have assigned the same Hyatt sound to each of the two pads. In drum kit number one I can play Hyatt by hitting the head of both pads using the hi-hat pedal I have connected to open and close the hi-hat. Now let me play head and rim. If you listen closely you can hear the edge sound on the PD85 that's connected to the AUX1 input, but not on the PD85 that is connected to the hi-hat input. Earlier in this video I have showed you that sometimes I play hi-hat on a single pad using the rim for the open hi-hat sound and the head for the closed hi-hat sound. Again, this works well on the AUX1 input but not on the PD85 pad that is connected to the hi-hat input. In the module itself, I am able to set instruments on the edge of the hi-hat and on the mute group page I am able to make the mute settings that I have showed you earlier. Since I do not want the pads to mute the other one, I have assigned the head and rim of the hi-hat input to mute group 2. To show you that the muting does work, I can use the trigger and preview buttons on the module. So after these two tests, I think we can draw the conclusion that we can't play the rim or edge sound on the Hyatt input from a PD85 pad or even a PDX100 pad. At least not on the TD50X with my version number. At first I thought this was a software shortcoming, a software restriction related to the special character of the Hyatt. But after giving this some more thought, I now believe this may be hardware related. The Wikipedia VDRUMS page is a great resource. There you can check how many pads on your module are which type. The numbers for the TD50 module are 1 mono, 3 piezo switch, 9 piezo piezo and 1 freeway. So let's put it in a diagram. Input 1, kick, is the mono type and the right is the freeway. The inputs for the snare and toms and oaks must be of the piezo-piezo type. That means that besides the two crashes, the hi-hat must also be of the piezo switch type. The mesh head pads are obviously a piezo-piezo type pad. That must be the reason why these pads do not work well with the hi-hat input. So, to summarize, I prefer to play Hyatt on these two PD85 pads. But these pads do not seem compatible with the Hi-Hat input. My workaround is to connect these two PD85 pads to the AUX1 and AUX2 inputs. 
since I want to get the most out of my module and want to use all the trigger inputs, I now connect this CI12C symbol to the Hyatt input. It's not ideal, but since I use the copy function a lot, I can live with this strange limitation. The topic I covered in the last four minutes or so could be seen as the first suggestion I have for Roland. But I already found a workaround and also I'm not sure whether this change can be done through a firmware update. It might need a hardware update. So to start with some simple suggestions, let me first give you five suggestions for updates that I think could be easily applied to the TD50X. One. Currently, control functions can be triggered by using foot switches and by AUX3 and AUX4 inputs. But these settings are global settings. That means that you have to choose what to do with these inputs for every song you play. But during a rehearsal or a concert, your preferred function may change depending on the song. While you may have a few seconds to change the function during a rehearsal, you probably will not have enough time during a concert. If a drummer would be able to set the control function per drum kit, that would be helpful for creative drummers that play lots of styles. Two. If suggestion One. would be honored, it seems that it would not be a big step towards extending the control functions to other pads. Just as you can set a sub-instrument per input, you could also assign a control function to any pad in your kit, whether it's AUX3 or 4 or another pad. When I added drum kits, I find myself switching the H and R head and rim option on and off quite frequently. For pad inputs with acoustic sounds, like the snare or a crash cymbal, I usually want head and rim to stay connected. But when I play electronic music, I often disconnect head and rim in order to set two totally different sounds on the head and rim. When I'm editing two or more inputs to make sure they sound well together, I may forget to switch the H&R option on or off again. Sometimes the result is that I lose sounds that I have carefully programmed. That's annoying. Four. There is an SD card button. Pressing the button without shift brings up functions to make backups to the SD card. But loading samples from an SD card requires the unexpected combination SHIFT plus SETUP. That is confusing. The combination SHIFT plus SD card would make much more sense. But that combination brings up the copy functions. But that is strange because copying does not really require an SD card. Since I use these copy functions a lot too, I have gotten used to these two strange key combinations. But for new users, I believe that switching these two combinations would be better. In the TD60, I would like to see a dedicated copy button. Five. When copying sounds from one pad to another, it helps when you can hit a pad to define source and destination. This is faster than using buttons and the chance of making a mistake is reduced. This is possible in lots of drum modules, even in the old Alessis D4 which I used in the 90s, through the note chase function. It would be nice to be able to go to the copy page and hit the pad to define the source and hit on another pad to define the destination. Just like you can hit pads to set mute send and mute receive inputs on the mute group page. This should be a very simple update. That concludes the first five suggestions for which I believe they do not need a change in hardware. I can also think of five suggestions that I believe would probably do need a change in hardware. So I guess these might be suggestions for the future TD60 module. Let me add these five suggestions as nerd alerts to shorten this video. Six. Nine. One. 
Well, we've come to the end of this second update video in which I have explained why I chose the TD50X and I've shown you that even though I'm very happy with the module, it's not perfect. I hope you have enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and I will try and post a new cover or update video soon.